Okay, so I think we're gonna get started now. Um, welcome everybody, happy Thursday. Welcome to today's Peek at Home webinar. Peek at Home is a collection of webinars and lessons that you can do at home with little or no materials. You can participate in a live webinar where we discuss various STEM heroes or you can follow our lessons at home. Discover how each STEM hero has navigated their path to becoming a professional within the STEM field and give students a glimpse into their STEM future. All right, so we are the Energy Coalition, and you can say it T-E-C, pronounced tech. And we are a nonprofit organization with over 45 years of experience designing and implementing strategies that transform the way we use energy and inspire people to take responsible energy actions in their everyday life. So my name is Jasmine, and I am a Climate Corps Fellow with Tech. And I am located in Riverside, California, and I focus on education and training in the Inland Empire. And my name is Megan. I am also a Climate Corps Fellow with the Energy Coalition. I work on outreach down in San Diego, so I, we help bring um, education and work with teachers surrounding energy and environmental um, studies to schools. Yeah, so before we get started, I'd like to go over our last activity just so you guys all have a chance to prepare. Um, our STEM hero for this week, her name is Helena Mater, and she's a graphic designer. And at the end of this webinar, we're going to be doing our own designs and creating our personalized logos based on the skills that we explored throughout her video. So before we get started, I'd just like to ask you guys if you guys can get a piece of paper, some markers, and colored pencils. And then we'll use these for the activity at the end of our presentation. Thanks. Now let's take a look at Helena Mater's story. She's a graphic designer. I'm gonna play a video of our STEM hero. And for those of you that would like to watch this video or check out some of our other STEM heroes, know that these are always accessible through our PEAK website, www.peakstudents.org. And today we'll show you the recorded video of Helena Mater where you can learn about her and her skills as a graphic designer. While you watch this video, I want you to pay attention to her skills because that's what we'll be using during the activity after and before we create our own design. So let's go ahead and watch together. Hi everybody, this is Zoe at the Energy Coalition and I'm excited to welcome our next My Energy Future speaker, Helena Mater. So she's going to tell you guys a bit about her life and work. Hi everyone, I'm Helena. I'm a visual designer. I design websites and interactive experiences. So what that means is that I merge my skills, my creative skills and technology to communicate things better to people both online, so when you visit a website on your computer or phone, and then also how that sometimes carries into offline experiences with print um, posters or magazines or booklets as well. Um, I love my job because it's fun that I get to work on a diverse range of projects. It's like almost every month or maybe even from week to week, I get to work on something new, which keeps things exciting for me because I like to see different things and build my skills in different ways. At my most recent job, I worked at a company called Blue State Digital, which is a marketing agency. And so we got to work with a lot of organizations that help people and the planet. Some examples are Sierra Club, Nature Bridge, the Aquarium Conservation Partnership, and Playworks. Those are some of my favorite projects because a lot of those had to do with education or conservation, both the environment, um, and then helping people get out around the, around the country to enjoy our national parks, which is really great. So I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I grew up surrounded by my parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Most of my family lived in the area, so I always felt like I had um, a lot of people to look up to and a lot of people um, to learn from in different fields of work and work and life. Um, many of the people that I was surrounded by worked in a huge different range of fields from you know, food service, working in restaurants, to working on cars, to working on taxes and accounting, which are things that I still don't really understand. But it was just nice because I got to see so many different people working in so many different fun things. Growing up in the in the Bay Area, um, which is so close to Silicon Valley, um, which is where a lot of the really big tech companies are, I kind of always had an idea of different fields of 
different ways I could get involved in STEM, but the closest relationship I had in my family most likely was with my father, who's a software engineer, um, so he wrote a lot of code. When I was younger, I loved to hike, camp, and explore. Um, my parents took me to national and local parks as a kid, and when I got older, I started going on those longer trips with my friends as well. That's something that I've always enjoyed, and I'm happy to say that I still enjoy now. I've also always loved drawing. Art was my favorite subject in school, throughout elementary school, middle school, all the way to college, and I've been trying to um, keep at it as an adult, because sometimes that can be a bit tricky. And also, I honestly didn't really know what STEM was when I was younger. I went to a couple of summer camps in middle school and high school where we made video games, so um, did a bit of coding there, and also some summer camps where we designed buildings, which was like an architecture camp, and both of those I thought were fun, but those were really the, the first times that I ever thought about what a career in STEM could mean for me. And then those also probably sparked me when I then took more electives in high school and college to look more into fields where I could merge those different interests. So I went to school at the University of Miami in Florida. Um, I graduated with a degree in visual journalism, which um, for me meant a lot of design, um, and some photography and video. And then also computer science, which was fun because we got to do a lot of coding and I got to learn a lot of um, skills that were very different from anything that I'd ever done before. And then also art because I've always loved art and that was something I wanted to keep doing in school. So I did a couple of internships in college, um, but they weren't exactly the same type of thing as what I do now. Some of those internships involved uh, photojournalism and video journalism, which meant that I would go to events or meet different people and interview them to get to learn more about their life and then communicate those in either written stories or visual stories to other people. I also tried to get involved in any projects that sounded interesting in school, both in school and outside of school internships, because for me it was all about just trying to figure out what I like to do. So I felt like, as I said when I was younger, there were so many different options that I'd seen other people doing, um, and I was just trying to filter through all of that to figure out what it was that I wanted to do. There are also many people in my life who helped me in one way or another figure out what that was. Unexpectedly for me, an art teacher and a fellow student in my first year of college made the biggest impact with how I ended up in STEM. Um, I was taking an art class and one of my professors was talking to me about, you know, I was planning on changing what I was studying and he, after talking to me about what my interests were, boiled down that it sounded like I just liked to build things, I liked to make things. Um, which was new to me, like I had never heard anyone say that to me. So then that impacted what I then looked for in different courses and different projects. And then eventually led me to, um, you know, study both the creative side and more technical development side of computer science and visual communication, which is pretty close to what I do now. Um, yeah, so to get to where I am now, um, <laughs> I've had to learn a lot about trusting myself. Um, I think that me and I'm sure many people deal with situations where they don't feel quite comfortable or it's something very new that they've never dealt with before. Um, and so in learning to trust myself, even when working on something that I've never done before has been really important. I think I've learned that there will always be situations where I feel lost or I'm starting to work on something that I've never done before, both in work and outside of work. And so just, in those situations, realizing that I have the skills somewhere um, to either solve the problem or to figure out how to solve that problem by reaching out to other people that I know or by doing a bit of research on my own. Something else that I'm still learning to do um, is speak in front of groups, people. This is something that I've been nervous about and um, has been difficult for me since I was in elementary school. I remember having to do science project presentations and just feeling very, very nervous that I'd have to stand, stand up in front of a class. But I've noticed that through practicing, both in classes, starting from elementary school all the way up into college, and then also doing that more in work, um, has really been helping me learn um, both learning tips for me to make it easier and smoother throughout the process, and then also build my confidence. Because most recently, at my job, I've had to give some presentations of my own work, which is um, always a bit nerve-wracking, but I found that, you know, by trusting in some of those tips that I've gained over the years, and even just the last few months, um, helped the presentation go really well, and even though I felt a bit nervous during the time that I was speaking, after the presentation, a lot of people that I work, up, work with came up to me and told me that I did a great job.
Hey, Alina, this is Zoe at the Energy Coalition, uh, jumping back in. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. That was really awesome. So now it's time for questions from you. I have a list of student questions here, and I'm going to read a couple off to Helena, and she's going to share a few more of her thoughts with us. Um, okay, so Helena, the first question, um, this is from a student at Esperanza Elementary School in LA. So what was your first job? Hmm. Um, my first job ever, <laughs> I was probably working at a bakery, which, you know, is way different than what I do now, but super fun, because I've always liked cooking and baking, as I said, I've always liked making things, um, just what I learned later on. So one of my first jobs was to get to a bakery early in the morning before any, before bakeries opened, before the sun even came up, and was to just work with dough <laughs> to make bread and also to make cookies. Yeah. And then my first job, my first job that's related to the field that I'm in now um, was right after college. I began freelancing. So what that meant was that I didn't work for a company exactly, but I just worked for myself. And either I would reach out to people or other people would reach out to me about um, help that they needed on either creating a completely new website or new logos. Um, or making changes to existing websites they had. And so while I was freelancing, I would both do the design side, so the visual thing that people see, and then also the development side, so how the sites function. Cool, thanks, Alina. And I, this is Zoe. I'm just going to jump in with a follow-up question of my own, just because I know you're doing really cool stuff right now. So you said you worked for yourself. And you mentioned your most recent job was at Blue State Digital, but I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about what you're doing now. Um, thanks, Zoe. Yeah, so now I'm actually um, back to freelancing. Um, because of, I think because of the skills that I've built up both in school and my studies and the experience I gained after school, I've been able to, I've been lucky enough to be able to travel um, while also doing work. So at the moment, I'm in Peru. In South America and in a few days I'm going to head over to Colombia to work on a project that has to do with using technology to map different communities and to help them bring in different infrastructure into into these smaller communities that didn't have all of those formal structures built and so what I'll be doing there is that I'm not only going to be help, helping document the project so being able to design some of those photo and visual skills that I studied in school but also um, have the opportunity to do a bit of design work as well. So I'm going to be designing the logo for the project. That sounds like a really interesting project. That's exciting. Good luck. Okay, and one more question. This is from a student at uh, Jefferson Elementary School in San Francisco. What advice do you have if you don't know what you want to be when you grow up? Yeah, I think that's a great question, especially because I honestly had no idea what I wanted to do when I grew up. Um, when I was younger, and I think even now sometimes, like as you're as you're an adult and you're older, you're still trying to figure out occasionally, like you know, what specifically you want to do, or if you like what you're doing, how you can do more of that. So the advice that I would give is to just try as many things as you can, whether that's in school and you have after school activities that you can do, or if you have a hobby um, outside of school that you like to do on the weekends or after school, like just keep trying to explore and experiment with what sorts of activities you enjoy doing. And then as you get older, once you figure out, or as you're figuring out what it is those things are, trying to determine how you can continue doing those and enjoy the work that you're doing as well. Um, so it's not just, you know, just a job that you have to do every day, but something that you enjoy doing and that you're happy to wake up doing every day. That sounds like great advice. Thanks, Alina. Um, yeah, thank, uh, thanks so much for joining us and sharing your story with us today. It's been a All right. Well, now that we know a little bit more about Helena, let's focus on kind of um, learning about her job a little bit more in greater detail. Um, I think she has some really, really cool experience as a graphic designer and she gets to travel and do her job at the same time. And she gets to work with companies to create designs and works of art based on their requests.
Yeah, so it definitely takes so many different skills to become a successful graphic designer. We can definitely tell that she's a very versatile person. And some of the skills that I noticed that she uses are some like project management, she's very creative, and she pays a lot of attention to detail. Megan, what were some of the skills that you noticed? You know, Jasmine, what really caught my attention is how she has such a strong work ethic and a lot of confidence in what she does. It takes a lot to build up your own business like that and go out to people yourself. And she maintains a really positive attitude throughout the whole thing. So I think traits like these are also incredibly important to have in a workplace or a job. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I really do admire what she does. So I, I want to know more about what skills it takes to become a, a successful graphic designer. And I know that everybody else wants to know as well. Yeah, I, I definitely do too. So let's take a look. Um, this is where you're actually going to need all of your pieces of paper, um, your different colors of pencils and pens or markers, whatever you want to do. Um, we are going to be doing this activity along with you. Um, and it's important to know too that you can have your own creativity in this. Um, we'll guide you through what we know, but you're welcome to not use colors, use different shapes or something, but make it um, creative to you like a graphic designer would. Um, so let's get started with our skills map. So this is what a skills map is. We have Helena Mater and her job in the very center in a big cloud shape. Um, that's gonna be our starting point. So take one color and then draw a cloud shape or whatever you want right in the middle of your paper. Pretty big, enough so that you can write Helena Mater, graphic designer in the middle. Take your time. You can always um, go a little bit slower than us or a little bit faster if you need. Here is what mine looks like so far. Awesome, you used red, great. This yeah. is mine so far. I don't know, can you see it? There we go. Yes, All right. looks good. So you see that we now have stuff that branches off of the center. That's going to be where we put our skills that we use for each job. So let's first focus on the screen and see the big blue circles that are connected to the cloud. Let's draw those first. So draw three, big enough so that you can write in. And then draw a line connecting the blue circle to the cloud. I'm using the same colors as our, as our, um, as our PowerPoint presentation. So that's what I chose to do. I'm using different colors, so I decided to do purple for mine. Great. Okay, um, so those are our first traits for Helena, but there's a lot more that she has instead of just those first ones. So that's where our orange diamond shape comes in next. Let's draw three orange diamond shapes connected to each of our blue bubbles. Remember, you always want them big enough to write in. And when you draw your line to attach the diamond shape somewhere, draw the line attaching to the blue circle. How's it look, Jasmine? Almost done. Almost done. Okay, here I'm done first. How's yours? It looks pretty good. I got some orange diamond shapes. I got some green ones. Nice. <laughs> All right. Our last one, this shape is called a hexagon because it has six sides. So you can draw a hexagon shape or you can draw something else and attach it just like we did with the orange one to your blue circle. So draw three hexagon shapes. And the line wants to go to the blue circle. The hexagon shapes are the hardest for me to draw. You have to count all the sides while you're drawing. You can do it too. I did my last ones pink. Cute. 
I did mine teal. Oh, that's my favorite color. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, so what comes next? We've drawn all of these shapes on a piece of paper, but what does that even mean, really? And so let's focus now on what we're going to put in the bubbles, and we're going to put different skills inside of those bubbles. So we have three different types of skills. There's workplace skills, there's technical skills, and there's interpersonal skills. Now, when you look at the different words inside those shapes, oh my gosh, they correlate to our skills map. So we'll put technical skills in the blue bubbles and we'll focus on those first. Technical skills are the kind of skills that you need ability and knowledge on specific tasks to do your job well. So like energy focused jobs need to have employees that are trained in scientific methods and data analysis. But for example, if you were a chef, you would probably need to have knowledge on how to cook a meal for somebody. So that's a technical skill. Yeah, so now that we know what technical skills are, let's think about Helena and how this applies to her job as a graphic designer. So what would be her technical skills? Now it's your turn to decide what three technical skills she would need. So if you guys have any idea, please send us a chat through the Zoom to participate. And we have a list here provided so that you can see which ones you think she has the most. So we'll give you about 30 seconds and then we'll, we'll talk about it a little more after. We want to see all your answers too, so send them in the chat box. Please. We'll read them out as they start to come in. Ooh, we have data visualization. That's a good one. What else do we have? Um, design thinking, project management. Yeah, absolutely. What else? Anything else? She needs a lot of skills. Innovation framework, that's a good one. Yeah, innovation framework and project management, yes. Awesome. Okay, well, you guys have answered really well. Let's see if we can put them down on our skills map. So thinking about these skills, we'll do this top um, left bubble first. And I think that we got innovation frameworks. Now that's kind of a long word, but it really just means that clients have an idea and then you are able to customize it to them based on what they want. So let's write innovation frameworks in the top left bubble. Because I think Helena uses this a lot to personalize um, the graphic design to a certain company. Good, I just wrote it down too. Me too. Now let's put in another one you guys said was market research and that's another great one too. Market research is where you have to analyze who your audience is so that you can um, give them the correct information. So think about um, if you were trying to sell like a baby bottle, who would you want to sell the baby bottle to? Like your older sister or maybe your mom who takes care of the baby. And that market research is probably going to analyze it to be the mom who will buy the bottles to feed the baby. Let's think about our final bubble. Let's put in another one that you guys said, which is project management. That one goes down at the very bottom. And project management just means doing something from the very start to the very end. And so Helena, does drafting, she does planning, and she does the research, and then she comes up with a final finished project at the very end. So I think she has a lot of project management skills as well. Wow, you guys have done all this so far. Yeah, it looks so great. So now that we have all of our words on our paper, we're gonna move on to the next skill set. 
which is workplace skills. So when you think about workplace skills, think about the general skills that you'll need when you're in the workplace. So these skills help you succeed in any type of situation. And these can include general problem solving, teamwork, um, following instructions, things like that. So let's take a look at our skills um, in our word bank and see which ones connect with Helena's skills the most. So make sure you connect these newer skills to your previous skills that we took a look at before the technical skills. And we'll give you about 30 seconds. So send us the ones that you guys think are gonna be the, the ones that Helena has in the chat box. Creativity, yes, she definitely has to be creative. Client management, yeah, definitely. What else, you guys? Pull them in here. Couple more. Yeah, deliverable design, I see. Attention to detail, definitely. Presenting, oral communication, time management, absolutely. Yes, really great job, you guys. You've listed a lot of um, skills so far that I think really coordinate with Helena. So let's, let's go back to our skills map and let's pull up a skill that matches with innovation frameworks. And we got one that said deliverable design. And I think that's a really great one to put in there um, because creating visual product or project rather, to showcase what you want to do is something that you need to be able to communicate with the person that you're doing it for. So it's basically putting your ideas down on paper in a way somebody else can understand. And I think that she does that really well. Let's see, I think there's another one that we have now for market research. Um, we got attention to detail. And I think that one's a great one because whenever you do research, you have to, um, really understand and look at the fine things so that you can get to the right data. And I, um, Helena does that well as she learns to look at her data and figure out which audience she wants to target. Okay, I've wrote, written all mine down so far. I hope you have too as you're following along. We have one final technical skill left to do and for this one, we got a lot of responses that looked or talked about time management. And I think that when you are managing your own project, you have to definitely manage your time because you're doing something from the very start to the very finish. So how can you plan something in a timely manner and then move into the creation of that product so that it can then be given to your client in a respectable amount of time or in the due date that they want? So I'm going to write that down in my orange diamond as well. Okay. So all of you are doing such an amazing job at figuring out all of these connections between all of the skills that we're talking about. Yeah, let's keep going and take a look at our final skill set, which is interpersonal skills. So interpersonal skills uh, mean how you interact with other people around you. So those can be things like how you talk to one another, your communication, how, what, or what kind of attitude you have. Is it happy? Is it sad? How you help others and your manners. So let's look at this table next and think about what would connect with Helena's skills of innovation frameworks, market research, and project management interpersonally. Um, send it into our chat again. We want to use your answers for our interpersonal skills. Yeah, I see charisma. That's definitely what she needs, and she has, of course. Active listening, yes, she does need to understand the client's wants for the designs. Positivity, yes, that does. Ideation, you guys are doing so well. Thank you so much. Keep it up, you guys. Adaptability, definitely. Yeah, 
I think you guys answered them so well. So let's keep in mind our previous skill sets and we're gonna start connecting them to our skills map. And Selena for the first one, to go with deliverable design and frameworks, we chose to have um, active listening. So when she's talking to clients um, and they tell her what exactly they want for her design, she has to be able to listen to them and communicate their needs into the designs that she makes. So definitely active listening is the first one. So we're gonna write that down in first hexagon. For our next one, For our next one, we're going to look at market research and attention to detail, and we see that she has a strong work ethic. When she works on something, she has to stay on top of her tasks, she has to manage her time, and so definitely she has a very strong work ethic. For our last one, we have project management and time management. So for this one, we're going to be taking a look at her confidence. She definitely talks about her journey with being able to present and getting comfortable with talking to clients and, and she's built up her confidence over time, which is amazing. Yay, I finished my skills map. Yay. Good. It looks great. Great, yay. I like being able to <laughs> see all of her skills down on paper. Um, and so now that we have been able to identify Helena's amazing skills, it's time for us to look at our own skills. So we'll move on to our next activity and we'll be designing our own logo and become a graphic designer. Um, so we'll use this paper, but just flip it over and use the back so that you can have workspace here as well. Keep all of your materials and we'll continue on together. Okay, so you might be asking, you've been hearing this word a lot about a logo. What is it? It's essentially just a symbol or a design for an organization that makes it easy to identify. So it's just something that, it's a visual representation of what that company is or what that company does. Yeah, so for the first part, we're gonna actually take a look at an example of a logo. So I'm sure a lot of you know Disney. They have one of the most recognizable logos in the whole world. So we take a look at their first version of their logo to their present version. So on the left-hand side, you can see that their first logo is most definitely hand-drawn. It was created by hand, and we have to also consider technology at the time. So one of their big things is Mickey Mouse, one of the first cartoons that they ever created. And so that was the focal point of their design. So you can see that the font is different. Um, you can see that Mickey's drawn out and this is, we're talking about like the 1920s to the 1930s. But then when you look into our present time, you can definitely tell that this is graphically made computer software and things like that. So also when you watch, like let's say you watch Frozen, you see that the castle is like covered with snow. It's, it's very different. It's very um, specific to the movie. And then if you watch a movie like Maleficent, you're gonna see it's like a darker, darker colors and it goes more with the theme of that movie. So that's how we're able to see the difference between the technology back then and then the technology now. So Megan, do you see any differences with both the past and present? Yeah, I definitely see all of the differences you just talked about. Um, I also noticed a lot about the font. The font changes from past to present and it turns into um, kind of like a cur cursive or a scripted um, logo font and that I think is very recognizable to everyone like you see that font you know that's Disney mm -hmm. all right so now that you kind of understand what a logo is how it works and what elements you need to put in we're gonna create our own logo for um, to represent ourselves so our step one is to write your name in the center of your page pretty big but not taking up the whole page so we'll do it with you Write it in a color that you like. My name is Megan, so I wrote it just like that, right in the center of my page. I've decided to write it with green today. Yay. Yay. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next one. I think we can do the next part. 
So this next part is um, adding design elements. So when you notice on the Disney logo, their design element is a big castle. So let's fill up and draw something that is unique to us. So what do you love to do? What is your favorite activity, your favorite color, or maybe even your favorite animal? Think of anything that represents you and then draw it around your name. So let's do it together. We'll give you like 30 seconds to a minute, draw some things. You can always, always add to it later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so don't rush on your designs. Definitely just do what you can now. And then once we're done, you guys can definitely go crazy and add as many things as you want to. So what's your favorite animal, Megan? Ooh, my favorite animal. Okay, I have a lot of different favorite animals because mm -hmm. I think that when you have like a safari, animal, you can have a safari favorite animal, you can have mm -hmm. a household favorite animal, or yeah. you can even have like an ocean favorite animal. That's so true. I think I'll tell you guys my favorite safari animal, which is an elephant. Oh, I love elephants. Me too. What, what's your favorite animal? A cow. I love cows. A cow? Aww. Yeah. That's so fun. <laughs> yeah. And you said- So everybody, if you guys want to tell us what your favorite animal, what your favorite color is, just put it in the chat box so we can get to know you a little better. Ooh, green elephant. Ooh. Octopus, that's so cool. Oh, an octopus. They're so smart. Patricia, yeah, great. All right, we'll give you about another 30 seconds. Remember, you don't have to rush. Yeah. Sea otters. Oh, well, that's my favorite <laughs> ocean animal too. There you go. See, you always never know what people will like. Turtles. I love turtles too. I love every animal. Puppies, oh my gosh, you guys uh -huh. have such great ones. <laughs> Puppy's cute. Puppy's really cute. Yeah. Oh, we're getting more. Oh, we have unicorns. <laughs> Aww. I like unicorns too. I think those are fun. Me too. They're super cool. Ducks. Oh my gosh. They're so cute too. I like that they can swim and walk on land. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's chunky cats. That's funny. <laughs> Little cats. Or maybe big cats, I guess. Yeah. How's okay. your design coming along, Megan? It's coming along good. I think I'm ready to show you. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here's my design. Woohoo! Okay. So beautiful. So my favorite color is yellow. So I made a sun out of yellow. And one of my favorite activities is to be outside and go hiking. So I drew mountains. Mm -hmm. And as I told you guys, my favorite safari animal, ooh, well, I can't point to it, is an elephant. elephant. So I drew an <laughs> elephant. And I like flowers, so I drew a little line under my name that's filled with flowers, too. So cool. I love it. How about you, Jasmine? So I'll show you mine. This is what mine looks like. Yay! It's also on the next slide. Yeah. We have one more step before they're fully done, too. Yes. All right. So let's go to our final, final step. Well, final two steps. Our step three is to choose three skills that describe you the best. So we're going to pick one from each category that we learned out, uh, learned about from technical, workplace, and interpersonal. And we're going to write each word somewhere on our logo. So anywhere you want, write one of those words. We'll give you the list back up so you mm -hmm. can have it. Um, and remember, you can have all of these skills in, um, in your person but we're gonna choose the best one from each category. So just pick one for now. Maybe it's your favorite one. I'm gonna do it as well. Yeah, so you guys can add these to your logo and just put it anywhere you think it fits with your design and you can write it any color you want to, it's up to you. And you can also send us a chat if you want to tell us before. Yeah, we love the chats. Yeah. We'll give you a little bit more time to do it. Maybe like 30 more seconds. 
I'm still working on mine too. <laughs> oh, did we get a chat? I think we did. Design thinking. Design thinking, good. Strategic planning and positivity. Those are such good skills that you have. Somebody also just told us their favorite color, pink and green. That's a fun one. Too. Ooh. I missed that before. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I hope everybody has found their, their, oh, we got another chat. Let's put the good one. Communication, yeah, okay. All right, so I'm gonna share mine with you guys. So I decided to write positivity in my son Oh, for my um, interpersonal skill, project management in my um, mountains for my technical skill and creativity for my workplace skill. And I wrote those ones down in the flowers. So this is my logo. Yay, this is what represents me. That is so cool. And I can definitely see how that's you. It's so personal to you. And I'm sure all the ones that you guys did at home also represent you as a person. Jasmine, what about you? Did you finish yours? Yeah, so if you wanna to go to the next slide. So here's my design. Um, unfortunately, we cannot do our graphic design together. So here is my drawn design. And for my technical skill, I chose design direction. Um, I chose adaptability for interpersonal skill and deliverable design for workplace. And I definitely think that my design is me in a logo because in college I studied sustainability, which means conserving our earth. So that's where the planet's in the middle. Um, I drink a cup of coffee every day. So there's the coffee mug. And my favorite, my favorite animal is a cow. So that's what that is on the corner. And then if you go on the next slide, you can see how I made it into a graphic design. So I used um, some software called Canva and I, I kind of, did similar things to what I did when I drew it out, but then I was able to make it more cohesive. So I picked a font that looked kind of like my handwriting, and then I added my, my um, skills on the outside, and then you can see the little cow is like the little point on the eye, and then the coffee beans instead of the coffee cup. So they're very similar, but they're different at the same time, and you can see how you can translate your ideas from drawing to graphic. Yeah, and that's exactly what Helena gets to do in her job. So I'm so glad that we got to do it all together and see the final product, which is a great logo that I think represents you so well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I know you guys are working hard at home and we want to see your designs too. So though we may be in a webinar format, if you can send your de designs to education at energycoalition.org, with parent permission, then we are happy to showcase it on our next webinar. So you can have your design be up and we can go over them and look at all of the hard work you've done at home. And we're so excited to see what you've done. Yeah, I'm definitely super, super excited to see your design. So please send them over. Um, that's pretty much all we have for today. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, you guys can also check out our lessons at peakstudents.org for access to our peak at home lessons or to our previous webinars that are recorded and also this one, which will also be available to you online. Um, join us on, Friday, on next Tuesday at 1 p.m. So we have another webinar showcasing our STEM hero, Krista Trexler, who is a biologist. We hope to see you there. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, send in your designs. We can't wait to see them. Bye. This webinar was brought to you by the Energy Coalition. With NGSS aligned and environmentally focused STEM lessons, the Energy Coalition provides peak at home, digital lessons designed to support your students' curiosity for science and exploration from the comfort of home. To sign up is quick and easy. Simply visit the Families Corner of the Peak website at peakstudents.org slash families corner. There, you can complete the registration form for access to our full Peak at Home library and for more information on all Peak program offerings.